the description of this video. Um, but every now and then I ask people, what do you want me to talk about on YouTube? Because I, I just kind of forget about topics that, you know, I don't, I run out of ideas. So somebody said, how do you run a sale? Because I don't, I don't run very many sales. I honestly don't do sales. And I'll explain why, but I can tell you how you should run a sale and when you should start thinking about the big sales around the holidays and that kind of thing. It's not that complicated. All right. Because there's a very, there's a very specific structure to sales. If you do it like in a very specific structured way, it's pretty easy to set up once you get the hang of it. It's just kind of, you know, it's it's traffic, the same kind of emails you send out, the same kind of social media posts you do every single time. But every now and then you just want to do a quick sale or whatever. And some people will do sales all the time on different parts of their shop. So let me show you my shop. Here we go. Okay, so, uh, all right. So now I, I generally don't do sales at all. And if I did a sale, I probably wouldn't send them to Etsy. I would send them to my website. But the reason that I do that is because I have this sign up here that is to my email list and people can get 20% off if they sign up for my email list. So they kind of have a sale all the time. So they can do a self-imposed sale or they can wait. But my customers also don't respond to the same types of cues that other types of businesses customers do because my customers are buying they're buying things that they need to create something for someone else. So it's cake decorators who are buying flowers for a wedding cake and they need a specific kind. Or it's a, a parent who's making a cake for their kids and the kid wants a specific themed cake. So it's not, it's not like my customers are out there looking for a sale. They're just looking for a specific thing and they're gonna pay what they need to pay and they're happy with that because they can get this to sign up so it's a sale. So whenever people write to me and say, um, hey, can I get a discount? I say, you can sign up for my mailing list and there's your sale. Okay, now if I wanted to do a sale that was different, let me take this out and I will put this, oops, that's the wrong one. This one, what I would do if I was gonna set up a sale on Etsy is to go to your marketing tab and it's over here in the grayed out area. It's marketing and then I think it says sales and coupons and then this comes up and up here on the top, it says new special offer. I know this is all grayed out, but I'm, I'm just, I had, it, I had it up and ready on the screen. So you basically want to run a sale, okay? Um, now I would, I would set this up too. People have asked me about this. This is the thing that Etsy sends out when you have an abandoned shopping cart or if something is favorited and it does go on sale, Etsy will send them an email. If they don't get it every single time, there are rules about how many Etsy can send and that kind of thing. But this, it's worth setting this up because it's free. Go ahead and do it. That, that has nothing to do with running a sale, but just go ahead and do it, okay? Um, and it could be that no one will ever use it, but so what? Go ahead and do it. All right, so you want to click run a sale. And the, the problem with running a sale on Etsy is that they give you weird parameters about what you can mark down and how you can mark it down. And depending on if it's like a percentage off or a discount, uh, let's see, percentage off, choose a discount, you could do a percentage I thought they had I thought they had like a dollar off amount. I guess not. Okay, so it could be a percentage off. Let's say 15%, whatever. Now, actually, let's go back. When people sign up for my email list, they get 20% off. So for me to do a sale, I would have to have it higher than that because why bother? All right, because people aren't going to shop for less than what they can do normally. So I would do 30% off. 40% is high. Okay, if you have a 40% off sale, you'd better sell everything because that's pretty high. That's that's a lot. So just watch your profit margins too. You have to be careful with this because if you have Etsy ads involved or offsite ads involved, you might end up paying someone to take something from you if your percentage off is too much. You might just not have any profit after you're done with all the discounts. So let's see, I will say this is US only. Ba, 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 ba. And this is where it gets weird. Um, you can... Let's say you, you can do like no, there's no restrictions. They can get 30% off on everything. This would be like they have to buy five things in order to get the 30% off. Okay, or you can do it based on the order total, but I'm going to put none. Let's set up, what is today? Today's the 18th. We'll set this up for tomorrow so I can go in and cancel it because I'll probably forget. 19th to the 20th. And then you can put in your terms and conditions. Okay, so if you're having a clearance sale and you're not taking returns, say final sale, no returns, you know, condition as is, just whatever conditions you want to put in there, then you want to name your sale here, YouTube test, okay. 
Oh, and you can't leave spaces. So there you go. Okay. And then you're going to hit continue. Now, this is where I'm not sure. It looks like they might have changed some things here, which is nice. Okay. So let's say we're going to do cupcake wrappers. It's like printable cupcake. I'm in my other shop right now. Um, and you can choose, I, I just chose the entire section, so it'll put everything in there. But if I only want to put one on sale, I'll just like X out all the ones I don't want to add. So that's the only one that's going to be on sale. Okay. Or you could search for a single listing with the keyword. Let's review and confirm. Okay. And then it's going to give you all the details and you do that. Now let's go back and I want to find out free standard shipping. I think that they used to have a dollar amount off. That could be what it is. I don't know. Or maybe it's if you do a quantity. Let's try to do a quantity. Let's do an order total for, okay, that's that's what it says. Okay, so if you do an order total, that makes your sale shop-wide and you won't be able to discount specific listings. All right, so if, you, if you're saying, hey, I can afford 40% off if they spend $100 or more. Well, that means that your whole shop is going to have to be on sale and you're not going to be able to choose the listing. So let's go through and do that. Review and confirm. Fix the errors. Oh, choose a discount. Oh, all right. So it's 30% off, but they have to spend $40. And it's going to be, you know, the same thing. So once you go over here, see, it just skips that section about change about choosing your listings. So you have to make a decision and you have to look at your profit margins really carefully here when you're doing a sale. I don't do the sale, like I said, because I offer the 20% off. So let's cancel this, cancel special offer, and then they're gonna try to get you to, to do it anyway, and we're not gonna do that. Okay, so um, the way that I would do a sale, okay, I would either offer the higher percentage, and some people will ask, well, let's see, stack a coupon. No, if they have a coupon code that you've given them, and there's a sale that's set up, Etsy will just take the higher amount or it'll either take the last one they put in or the higher amount of the two and it will stack on free shipping. So if you have free shipping on something and that's your offer, that's your sale as a free shipping sale, then they will be able to use a coupon code if you have that in addition. So watch out for that. But if you give people on your mailing list, say, say I give people on my mailing list 40% off and it's a special coupon code that I put in Etsy as a special sale, sale then they will not be able to also get a 30% off sale that I've set up for the whole shop, okay? So that's that's how I do a sale. So to circle back around, that's how I would do a sale. What I do is I set up a percentage off site-wide or on a section or whatever item I wanna do. And then I would offer my email list an additional discount on top of that. And that's to say, thanks for being on my list. You guys get the best deals. And that's why you're on my list, because I'll let you know about new products first and you get the first choice and that kind of thing. So what you could do is set up a 30% off sale in your shop and then have a preview day at 40% off. And you send that email to your email list. Let it go for two days, maybe, because some people don't answer the email. They don't open emails every single day. So send a 40% off coupon code just to your email list. And you're going to have to set that up in the Etsy shop or on your website. So there are apps that will find coupons. So maybe someone who's not on your list will find it. It's not that big a deal. So just have that coupon be good for one or two days. Send it to your email list. Say it's 40% for you now. On Friday, it's going to drop back down to 30 so take advantage now, shop ahead, or you can just let that run the same amount as the sale days and let your email list shop with that coupon code the whole time. Either way works. You just want to make sure that the people on your email list get a better deal or in your Facebook group, they get a better deal. Just some, you want to give them some kind of a benefit to being on your list because that's why people sign up for email lists. They want the best deals. So make sure that you're doing that. And that's the easiest way to do it. Some people say, oh, I want to stack the coupons. And for that, you can use, there's an app called Etsy on sale. You can use that, but I think you might have to pay for it. I'm not sure. I haven't used it for so long because you don't need to. All you have to do is just send your email list a separate coupon code and say, use this instead of the sale code and you're going to get a better deal. Okay. So that's how I run a sale when I do, which is hardly ever because I don't need to because I give out the email list sign up coupon code anyway. And I do remind people of what that code is every time I send an email out. It's not a big deal to me if they take that 20% because I have it factored into my prices. 
And that's something you need to think about too. Make sure that you're looking at your profit margins. It's not fun to run a handmade business when you're making things and you're earning $3 an hour. That is not good. So don't do that to yourself. Now, the other question that people had about sales, and I'm, I always talk about this in the eShop group um, because I, I put stuff up about the holidays. And there's a whole thing about prepping for the holidays and stuff in there. But there is a way that you can figure out when you should be planning ahead for gifts and buying seasons for different holidays. Okay, so let's show this. This is Google Trends, all right? All you have to do is go to Google. It's Trends. It's Google. I think it's trends.google.com. I put in trends.google.com or Google Google Trends. It's not hard, okay? Hard to say, apparently. Um, but you can put in whatever keyword you want. So I just put in Christmas gifts. So And this will tell you when people are searching for that keyword. So... If you look here, people start searching for Christmas gift on Google right around August. So it's like the middle of August. And this 100 here shows when it's the most popular. So it's the most popular as a search term around mid-December, mid to late December, okay? And then here we go, 22nd to 28th of December just drops to nothing, obviously, because Christmas is over, okay? So you can go in and do that and see when should you be prepping for Christmas? Well, the searches start in August. And if you think, oh, that can't be true, people don't shop that early. Let's look at the past five years, okay? This is the past five years of data and it's a pretty consistent trend if you look at this curve. So August, it starts to go up. August, that's September. Right there is August, it starts to go up. It kind of went crazy in July there. August, it starts to go up. So every August it goes up and right at Christmas, it drops off, okay? So you can do the same thing in Google Trends for things like Mother's Day, okay? And I would leave the apostrophes out because people you know, tend to not put those in when they're searching. So look, at the end of February, end of February, that's late January, that's the beginning of February. I think people went crazy in 2018, I don't know why. Um, February, February, yeah, it's like late January, early February. So this this is a pretty consistent trend. Again, well, let's look at this chart by itself. That's a pretty consistent chart, okay? And if you just look at the past 12 months here, it'll take you, and you can see the last year, you can see it a little more closely. So really at the beginning of the year, it goes up a little bit. And then in March, it goes up a lot, like, it starts to go up in February and March, but then really, let's see, in April, like mid to late April, it goes up. So you can check any kind of holiday. What you have to remember is that you want to do the sale. Number one, give yourself time to ship things, okay? Because you don't want to do the sale right here because that's Mother's Day. And you don't want to do the sale right here because that gives you three days to get people things. You want to do the sale when the interest starts to peak and you still have time to ship things and make them. And sometimes it's good to just put the sale on things that you already have made up. That makes your life easier. But Google Trends is a really good way to figure that out. Let's look at um, Valentine. Well, yeah, let's look at Valentine's. I'll, I'll do Valentine's gift. Okay. And you can do whatever search term you want. You can compare to. We'll do Valentine's Day. And it'll show you two lines at the same time. Oh, that's interesting. Well, okay, people are searching Valentine's Day way more than Valentine's Gift. And like I said, this 100 doesn't mean it's like 100 searches. It just means that's when it's the most popular, okay? So Valentine's Day is much more popular a search than Valentine's Gift. I'm going to take this out, remove... And Valentine's gift is the most popular, if I can hover over this, yeah, right around Valentine's Day. So I would do my sale for Valentine's Day, maybe the end of January, mid to late January, and I would end it probably about a week before, because I don't want to have to take more than a week to send things. And that's just domestically. If you're shipping internationally, it's a different story. So you want to make sure your shipping time is going to be okay. But you can use this trend. You want to do a sale kind of in this space right in here, okay? You don't want to get too close to the date because of the shipping, but you also don't want to wait until right here because that's too late. You know, people are still searching, but you're not going to be able to get them their stuff. 
Um, so you don't want to start way back here in December. People are still shopping for Christmas, but really it starts to go up. People start thinking about it in January, obviously. So that's how I would determine when to do a sale. How I would determine how to do a sale is more about, um, you know, like what I'm going to offer my email list. But you want to start prepping about a week ahead of the sale if you're going to do a special sale just for your email list and then for the rest of the people in the general public. Start sending them, an e like I would send an email on Monday if I'm going to start the sale on Friday or maybe the week before. I would do it probably on Monday. And just say, I'm, I'm having a sale. Watch your, you know, watch for the details coming up toward the end of the week. Special offer for email list subscribers only. And you want to make the title of the email interesting so they open it and they see it. And then the day of the sale that they can use their coupon, send them a, an email. The second day that they can use their coupon, send them another email. And then the third day, you send an email out to the whole thing and say, you know, here you go. The sale's open to the public now. And make sure that you're mentioning the things that have sold out. You really want to sell out things. And that's another whole, that's another whole topic about like, you know, product lines and selling out and scarcity. And you know, I'll just say it's really easy to sell out if you only have two of something. The eShot group too, because we were talking about um, I think product lines and like promoting a new a new collection and that kind of thing. And you really, when you start with new collections, oh, I'm not even going to get into that. But for sales, it's not a bad idea to have one or two things where you only have a couple items. And then you send out that first email and you mention limited numbers of this thing. People buy it immediately. It sells out. The second email you send out, you can say, five things sold out already. Here's your coupon. Make sure that you don't, don't miss out. Okay. So if you only have one thing and it sells, you can legitimately say it's sold out. And that's what people do. So that's how that works. Okay. So... There's a lot of way to do sales. Come on over to the public Facebook group and you can talk about it over there because I'm sure other people have other ideas. And it really is just kind of a structure. So once you set that structure up for yourself and you kind of know how your customers are going to respond, like, do they like a BOGO sale? Do they like a percentage off? Do they like a, um, a free gift with purchase of a certain amount of money? You know, you have to try out different things on your crowd before you decide what they're going to respond to most. Because it's interesting. Some people like one type. Some people like another type. I'm a sucker for a good BOGO. Some people like a percentage off. You know, so different things will trigger different people to buy. But the 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 meat in it is figuring out what that is for your crowd and how that can be used in the future to develop sales that will then get them interested in, in jumping right on there. All right, so give this video a thumbs up if you thought it had any good information at all in it, which I hope it did. And feel free to refer a friend. Don't refer your enemies. Refer a friend to this channel. And go ahead and join the Facebook group because we talk about home-based business and Etsy a lot. And um, it's it's a no-whining Etsy group, which I know is, is an anomaly, but they do exist. And we have one. There's a link in the description. All right, so I will talk to you guys later. and. Um, Subscribe to my channel, hit the notifications bell. I'll see you later.